Weapons were scanned to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are back. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see. The future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish to hear energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. For now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, wow, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I am your host, David, and joining me today we have Amy. Hey. We have Stuart. Evening, everyone. And we have the slowly dying EJ. Yo, dude, like, what's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> so, on tonight's podcast, we're talking about starting your own project, where we sort of cover the early stages of getting an idea down on paper and getting it the idea out and sort of in a Kickstarter form to get it going and try and get it on the, eventually on the screen. So, we've got EJ back on as an actual proper guest this time, as opposed to just a ringer. <laughs> <laughs> just, just someone that to, to, to provide that. Yeah, pretty much. So, so, someone <laughs> we just sort of guy. tease in a noise, like, "Hey Jay, join us on the podcast." But it's the middle of the night. You know you want to. <laughs> I thought that was Sky. <laughs> it's, it's almost see. That's how we do this podcast. It's just me tormenting people until I give up and agree to join us. It works. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's two in the morning here in California, yeah. so. <laughs> so. Yeah, we do appreciate you coming. So, um, the main theme of this podcast is getting the ball rolling, which is what I'm struggling to do right now, ironically. Um, <laughs> so, anyway. No call, so, <laughs> a lot of people sort of know the very rough basics on how to get an idea down. You write a story, you think it's the best story in the universe, and... You want to take it out there and show the world. Uh, what sort of tips and tricks do, would you suggest in order to make it, instead of being a cataclysmic failure, which 99.9% of projects tend to be, versus something like Nobility, which has obviously been a very much a success? Oh, well, I, I guess we'll find out when uh, when it premieres. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. says, well, but, uh, compared to pro- compared to the ninety nine point nine percent of projects that didn't make it past Kickstarter, it's a success already. <laughs> a successful Kickstarter. Oh uh, well, we didn't pass <laughs> Kickstarter. We we actually uh, you know I, I've been a part of uh, uh, crowdfunding projects that were successful and ones that uh, weren't. And uh, at the outset, uh, the Nobility one wasn't um and not because there's anything wrong with the concept or the people we have on board or whatnot um you know well first things first before before i start going into crowdfunding and all that uh, or any other alternate uh funding scheme that uh that is common uh, and that people like to use um the first thing i should say is coming up with the initial idea is easy as all heck yeah. that is probably the easiest thing that you will find in this entire process. <laughs> Ideas are cheap. They're a dime a dozen. In fact, I personally had to consciously make the decision to stop just sitting down writing ideas and take the ones I have and start pushing and, and getting bringing them to fruition. Otherwise, I'd just be sitting there coming up with ideas all yeah. the time. Um, and that's not to say I don't still come up with ideas, but I, I no longer made that a focus yeah. um, of mine because... You know, once you have a number of ideas... You've you got to tie you know, them together just, and make a coherent story out of them. Right, or, or even just the, the, the uh, project concepts. Like, there's so many concepts uh, that I have rolling around my head or that I've written down and just different stories I want to tell, both in the nobility universe and outside of it. Um, you know, uh, but, and it's just, you know, like I said, that's probably the easiest part of the whole process. Getting it together and moving forward, let me tell you, it's just like acting in the sense that if you are happy doing anything else with your life, do that. Yeah. <laughs> you do not, you know, if you're thinking this, it's going to be easy or, or it's going to be a cakewalk, 
I, I, I'll tell you from personal experience, it is not. It's probably the most difficult thing I've ever yeah. done is, is get, you know, get this to, to where it is. And, you know, it, it's funny because you're talking about how, how this is one of the projects that makes it this far as we made it. And I remember, uh, not I think it was last week, I was uh, talking with uh, one of our social media folks. And I, I turned to him and I said, you know, you know, it, it hasn't been released yet. There's still a long way to go with this project. But just the fact that we've made it as far as we have, we've already done the impossible. Yeah, exactly. And to do a Firefly quote, that makes us mighty. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and just for, for, you know, the listeners out there who uh, he is, basic concept is uh, Firefly meets The Office with Star Trek twist. Yeah. And from what uh, and... we've seen, it looks absolutely spectacular. So, <laughs> um, I, it's definitely something I'm very proud yeah. of. Uh, and just the journey and, and the amount I've grown on this journey has—it's just been remarkable. It's been amazing, and I'm—and we've been so lucky to get the people involved that we have involved. You know, just, not just our cast, which. Uh, our folks that I've always, you know, I grew up wanting to work with a lot, in a lot of cases, like, you know, Walter Koenig, uh, Chris Judge, um, Tori Higginson, so on and so forth. But, um, uh, you know, so being able to work with them as a professional, as, you know, not just a, a fan and, and geek out, but actually, you know, be the one writing their characters and talking to them and helping them develop the character and seeing what they're bringing to the table. Uh, it's just been a remarkable experience. Um, I, I couldn't even imagine but, uh, being in sort of that scenario relative to where I am now. My exposure to celebrities is two minutes at the front of a line getting stuff signed and <laughs> ten seconds in a photo booth. That's about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> And it was the same for me. I mean, I grew up in the industry. I mean, as we talked about on, yeah. on other podcasts, you know, uh, but I never worked in sci-fi as a kid. Um, I'm currently 28, and I, I started professionally acting when I was three years old, um, and uh, you know, and, and I was in, in stuff like all the way with Arnold Schwarzenegger and, and all that kind of stuff. So, like working with with slabs and A-listers and and on big bu uh, budget projects is all stuff that I grew up with. But again, I never got to work with sci-fi, so I never really worked with many if any of my like childhood heroes or anything and now i'm getting to do that uh which is awesome but like i was saying i started out the same way i remember in uh 2011 um you know i i'd gotten out of college and um i was kind of looking for ways to make that transition from child acting which for m most child actors including myself you know i'm no exception to this you kind of peter out yeah once you start hitting like 15, 15 because they can find folks who are 18 to play younger and then they don't have to deal with all the child labor laws. They don't have to school teacher on set. They can work you for 12 hours, not nine, you know, three of those hours are, aren't devoted to school, things like that. Um, a little insight into what, what you have to deal yeah. with, uh, for a child. Act. And, um, and so when I got to college, I came back and uh, I went to the uh, creation um, uh, Star Trek convention in, uh, in, um, uh, in Vegas, yeah. like the one they do every year. Yeah, that that and, is spectacular to see the different photos and stuff to come out of. It's an amazing con, and it was definitely, it was like the second or third con I'd ever gone to because my parents wouldn't let me go when I was a kid. And so I kind of went there, and it was kind of like, my people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of us, one of us. Well, my first con was in 2007, and then I did none until would have been probably 2011, 2012, somewhere around yeah. there. So. I, I, I've been around the scene for a long time. I've seen a lot of things. I've seen a lot of projects start small and grow big, and a lot of things not happen, sadly. I've watched Comic Con, uh, Supernova grow up. When I first started going to Supernova, as uh, just as a guest, which was my first one, it was uh, pretty much one small room, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. 
And yeah, now it needs like three built. It needs three buildings. Yeah, it grew yeah, that it's big. Crazy to think how far yeah. it's come. <laughs> so anyway, man. yeah, I'm I'm kind of seeing the same thing with uh, Kamikaze in L.A. Stanley's Kamikaze, yeah. uh, which is actually where Nobility will be uh, premiering. And um, it's just every year I've seen it. Like it's it, it started out because of Stanley's name and all that. It started out as a reasonably good sized convention. Yeah. But just every year, it's gotten better and better. It's gotten more attendance. And I'm told by some of the higher-ups uh, who are organizing that convention that this year is going to just blow everyone away. I don't know exactly how or why. They didn't give me that many details. They just said this this year is going to blow everyone out of the nice. water. So, ma- ma- so, maybe they're yeah, expecting so. a lot from Nobility. So you better not disappoint them. <laughs> oh, I, I don't think we will. I'm I'm pretty proud of, of what we've been able to accomplish, uh, especially with the, the the lack of budget yeah. we've had. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've seen the behind the scenes uh, stuff you guys release on YouTube, and how did that happen? I've seen the stuff you guys release on YouTube for behind the scenes, and a lot of that is absolutely hilarious to look at. Sort of a this is how we do the special effects. It's a garbage bag. <laughs> <laughs> that was what you saw. Yeah, it was it, uh, the, the the video he's talking about for for the audience out there is well, we put it out just recently, and it's uh, you know um, actually the uh, Michael uh, Dougherty who, who who started this whole thing. Like, it's actually his yeah. footage. Uh, he he visited the set and this and it's stuff that he he captured and gave us permission to use. So thank you, Michael. Um, Shout out to Michael. And. <laughs> And so we, uh, so, uh, you know, he, he's shooting, like, well, we have this, like, really big fight scene uh, amongst a couple of the Yujin, and uh, I think it's in the third act where we see that, and, um, uh, or third and fourth acts, uh, and uh, so, you know, he's kind of, like, in between takes, just taking footage of, of that, and, you know, you see this really cool set, and all these bright lights, and, and you know, actors in their costume, and they're fighting and all that, and then I, I kind of, hey, hey, come here, come here. And I take him around behind the set, and, he, and I show him that all that set was was a couple of, of, uh, 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 pallet, jacks, pallet jacks with uh, that had industrial pallets screwed to them, uh, li- uh, these just regular normal light fixtures, and garbage bags behind it. And in, and my comment was low budget filmmaking at its oh, best. Yeah. Uh, you know, for those of those out there just getting started, I mean, for me, this is my first project actually producing. Uh, and that's why I was commenting, like, how much I've grown and learned through this whole experience. Um, and and it, it's amazing what you can accomplish with just the simplest of materials. And if you just you light it right, you shoot it right. Uh, in camera, it looks yeah. amazing. Yeah, just Mac- MacGyver your way through it, and in the end, hope you've got something good. <laughs> yeah, well, the, I, I had the benefit of of um, working with with folks like our director Neil Johnson and and um, you know our experienced cast and and uh, our art director uh, Tiki Al, um, uh, who you know has worked on everything from you know Star Trek to Star Wars. I exactly. Mean. He's got quite the uh, Firefly or Serenity, the, the feature. He worked on that. I mean, and so I was able to partner with a lot of folks who were much more experienced than I was. And, and again, for those of you out there who, who are looking to start uh, doing this for your own self, um, that's probably the best thing you can do. Don't let them run roughshod over you, obviously. You know, make sure you're, you're adhering to your creative vision. But don't be afraid to partner with folks that have more experience and listen yeah. to them, especially... One of the best you know, things you can they, do as so sort of a leader of a group is listen to the input of those around you and use their experience to your advantage. Precisely. I mean, I, I, I uh, actually, this is the same conversation with uh, our, uh, uh, one of our social media folks. Um, and, you know, I was talking about kind of like how I go about things and, and my uh, quote-unquote command style. And I, I likened it very much to, to TNG. Uh, you know, everyone sits down in the conference room, Picard listens to everyone's ideas, and then makes an informed decision based yeah. on the experiences, the experience and, and recommendations of the people, uh, of, of his, of his um, uh, senior exactly. officers. 
uh, you know, listen to everyone, but then you're the one who makes the decision based on that input and what and and the things you uh, know in addition to, or that they might you know the folks you're working with might not necessarily know. So yeah, that's kind of yeah. how I go about things. Um, but yeah, so the story I was telling at, at creation or at the at the Star Trek convention is so I was, I was looking there and I met I was looking to make that transition into adult acting and I was speaking with um, uh, why am I drawing a blank on his name he's like at every freaking convention uh, Richard Hatch yeah. really nice guy always willing to give advice and, and help out and so I asked him like you know how, how do you go about making that transition he said go don't wait for the studios to call you go start producing your own stuff yeah. the industry's changed from the 90s and you can't just sit on the phone sit by the phone and wait for your uh your agent to to give you a call for an audition you got you got to be a lot more proactive now and especially with youtube that, and all that sort of stuff out there and um yeah oh yeah well the tools that you have now you know just in you know, uh, like uh, well, it used to cost what, um, for for a, for a camera crew. It would have been what uh, an actual film based camera. This is going back say twenty years. Uh, you didn't have digital cameras; you had film based cameras. So shoots were sort of one or two takes, and that's about all you got because that's all you could afford. Each take cost lots of money. Whereas now, if you do a take and you screw it up, you just delete the footage and start again. So. Um, I don't. I won't delete the footage because there might be something in there that you can use or, or yeah, want to use. But you, you, uh, you know what you know what I mean. You've got a lot more flexibility. And playing the blooper reel. And yeah, that's kind of what's going into. Uh, like, EJ, you're you're, like you're breaking up and... quite quite badly at the moment. Just so you know. You're you're running away. Can you hear me now. Uh, a little bit better. How about now? That's better. Okay, yeah. Um, so anyway, like with nonlinear editor editors like Adobe Premiere and um, and digital cameras like the Red, so you're not constantly having. And by the way, film stock, like if you're going to shoot on like 16 or 35 millimeter film, is expensive as all hell. I was part of a, a short that made a point to shoot on on. Um, uh, on, on, on film, and, and they made a big deal about you know how they wanted that for the look, and they didn't they didn't like digital and all that. Well, we shot with digital, and we shot uh, for the same budget of their twenty minute short. We shot the entire nobility pilot, and not only did we shoot the entire nobility pilot for that, but they had like almost like they had like no effects, no nothing like that. Whereas nobility has. Easily, I mean, we're, we're, I'm still waiting on the, on the final count, but it's easily over 100 effect yeah. shots. And they look, the, the ones that we've seen uh -huh. look really, really good, so. Uh, Thank yeah. you. Yeah, um, you know, Tobias to be Richter did a great job on the exteriors, and then we have uh, Thomas Butner, uh, who is uh, uh, doing all of our interiors. And they're both doing amazing jobs, and, and so, yeah, thank you yeah. For, for complimenting their work. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> nobility is one of the but, uh, three things that we are really looking forward to this year. So you, 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 you've actually, believe it or not, you're on the list with Star Wars. Just, oh, just wow. remember that. Thank you. So, you, you, <laughs> no, that's, that's a big honor. You, 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 might wow. be, you might be third on the list with Star Wars being number one by about a parsec, <laughs> but that's beside the point. Well, I mean, it's, it's freaking Star Wars. I, it, that one's on my effing list. And I'm a Strekkie, so that's saying something. Uh, Don't ask me what number two is. Number two? Don't ask me what number two is. I'll have to refer that one to Stuart. Stuart? Stuart, what's number two? And, and, and if you say Dragon Ball Z, I'm going to punch you. Uh, no, we've seen, we've seen that. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to think what's coming out this year. That way we haven't seen. I can't remember, so I throw Stuart under. <laughs> uh, we'll go Spectre. Actually, Spectre. Spectre's yeah, coming Spectre's out. This looks like it's going to be good. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I'm glad I saw Spectre quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I remember what it is. I remember what it is. Um, it's that new... Um, what's his face? He played... 
Scotty in the new Star Trek, his new movie with Robin Williams. That's what I'm really looking forward to. Oh, Robin Williams, the last movie, yeah. yeah. Robin Williams. Um, what's it called? Absolute I Power? I saw a trailer for it, like a... I saw a trailer for it. Absolutely like, anything, bring... absolutely anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, It's. it looks like it's going to be great, so... Ooh, that lucky son of yeah. a gun. I mean, it's, to work yeah, with Robin... It's, Robin Williams yeah, is... in a Monty Python movie is effectively what that is. It's, there's no way that could end badly. Oh, no. Oh, no, that is not ending badly at all. <laughs> so, nope. So, so. Nope. Uh, now watch it comes out and it's horrible. Uh, <laughs> it can't be as no, bad as Pixels Sonic or Fantastic yeah, Four. So. Nothing can be as bad as Pixels or Fantastic Four. Haven't uh, seen Pixels yet. Yeah. Don't so, bother. Just don't. Yeah, that's what I'm into about Pixels, which, you know, sucks because it looked really interesting. But, interesting yeah, concept, but when a 30-second fan-made film that costs 15 bucks looks and feels better than a multi-million dollar movie, yeah. Wow. There's a problem. Yeah, <laughs> there's your problem. Well, yeah, and, and that kind of goes back to what I was saying about, like, costs. It, 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 it's not about how much money you throw at it. I mean, that certainly helps. But it's about the story. It's about the actor, the, the, the characters and getting the right actors to play them yeah. and, and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, that's, that, you know, your, your camera can be a little off. Your lighting can be off. Your, your, your uh, effects can be a little cheesy. But if the story's there and the, and the acting is there, audiences will look past exactly. it. Exactly. Um, but if the best so, yeah. thing's only in the ads... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's amazing how many good trailers there are for crappy movies. Yeah. There's a, there's a, it's amazing how many <laughs> movies go, oh crap, this is a smoldering pile of shit. Quick, get all of the good bits, stick them together and call it a trailer, and that'll get people in. And it works. Yeah, that's exactly how it works. <laughs> <laughs> that really is exactly how it works, and the, the, there's so many folks out there that don't care whether or not it's good, only if it makes yeah. money, and that's something I strongly Bay, disagree yeah. with. Michael Bay. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Bay, I he, he's just he's too obsessed with with explosions. Yeah. <laughs> you got you got Michael Bay's got explosions. J.J. Abrams got lens flares. Steven Spielberg has dinosaurs. Yeah, <laughs> and Quentin Tarantino has yeah. blood, and George Lucas has Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, yeah. I find it amusing he's still trying to bring Jar Jar back. I oh find, my I god! Find, I find it amusing he's trying to defend Jar Jar at D twenty three. That was my point. Yeah, it, it, it's really interesting to see how many folks out there actually are, are really talented folks and how many folks out there who may be talented, but they get to that point where they're so big that nobody can tell them anything. Yeah. That... And they stop listening to people. And when that happens... Way. Right. They, you, you start seeing their work get really crappy, uh, like, the, like the prequel Star Wars. Yeah. It's really interesting. Now, and that's not meant as a, as a dig at, at George Lucas or anything, but I do think he has gotten to that point where he's just so big that he doesn't have to listen to anyone, and I don't think he is. Yeah. Nah. But, but, but George, I mean, George uh, if you're out there and you happen to be listening, which is damn near impossible, but just pretend you are. If you are listening and you do <laughs> want to come on here and join us and talk about all this fun stuff, feel free to send a message at facebook.com slash save sci-fi, and we'll have you on in a split second. Yeah. It's sad that he's gone to that point, but I do love that he was recognized as a Disney legend. Like, and you think of what he did, like what came out of the Skywalker Ranch, Pixar, Skywalker Sound, like all that stuff came out of it. Just, ILM. It's crazy. Yeah, ILM. Like, it's crazy to think of oh, yeah. what he, where, his, where his legacy come. is going to oh, yeah. be is astronomical. There is no money value on what he's going to leave behind for the film industry. Oh man, the the tools that he that he and his folks developed, like, yeah. really wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for for yeah, nothing. What, nothing what we would have, done. yeah. Nothing we would have today would be possible yeah. without what George Lucas has done. Like he 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 put he put film sci fi like he he raised the bar and put it so far ahead of its time. It's crazy ridiculous. Yeah. So, anyway, back on the right. the topic of. What were we talking about? 
to get <laughs> projects off the ground. Well, I, yeah, I started talking about crowdfunding there for a bit. Yeah, we'll, 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 keep going with, we'll keep going yeah, with crowdfunding, crowdfunding. sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that awkward, that no, awkward I... moment when the host doesn't even know what the hell's going on. <laughs> oh, wait, where's that you? Yeah. You're, you're, you're just I'm a really big windbag. <laughs> <laughs> No, we're enjoying it because uh, we don't we don't have that sort of insight from that side of the camera. We've only got this the side of the camera that yeah. most other people have. Like I've seen the odd yeah. set in use every now and again, but nothing compared to I've your level of a, experience. Yeah, I've been on a few sets because I've because I'm an ex roadie mainly focused with um, video production and stuff. So I've done a few things, but nothing like major with like Nabila and stuff. Yeah. So. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> hey, if you guys want, next time we're in production, uh, if you guys find yourselves out in, in this neck of the woods, uh, yeah, uh, I'll give you guys two. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll, I'll take Unless you up on that also if I ever want to go to a country where I'm statistically probably going to get shot at at least once. No, that's what a horseshit. We have more guns to people. Yeah. <laughs> that's terrifying. That is, that is very terrifying. Yes. It's, it's, it's re like living here, it's real. I mean, we, we can get on discussion about this, but I mean, most folks, it's it. They, they're they're taught gun safety. They keep the guns locked up. They don't keep loaded guns yeah. around. And, yeah. You know, people. Mo not, most people know what the hell they're doing with with guns if they own a gun. Um, it's the you know point one percent who are just total dumbasses and do stupid shit and end up shooting themselves. Or um, the wall, or the roof, okay. or that's yeah. Anyway, that's beside the point. Let's get back on topic because. Yeah. yeah, crowdfunding. <laughs> so take I, I, three. I, I mentioned. I'm so sorry. Crowdfunding. Take three. Click. <laughs> <laughs> um. So with crowdfunding, like I said, I've been a part of uh, successful crowdfunding campaigns. Uh, I had friends who have been part of successful ones, and I've been a part of ones that completely bombed, um, including the nobility Kickstarter campaigns and. The main difference that I've seen between the two is, well, two things. Organization, or three things. Organization, having the team put together, uh, you know, and, and proper prep work beforehand, and also having, um, uh, having uh, uh, an existing um, fan base of folks to reach out to who who are going to be interested in, in donating yeah, like You, uh, you money. reach out to the Star Trek fan base, you're going to walk away with quite oh, a bit of yeah. money. Because oh, yeah. right. well, that's why there's so many fan-funded Star Trek projects yeah. out there. And, and some of them know, look really good, and some of them don't. But that's just because Star Trek right now, they're so starved for content that almost all of the fans are like, yes, we'll give you anything, just give us something that looks awesome. And that's kind of been the bane of science fiction since the yeah. beginning, is there? It's so expensive to produce, and so and so few producers and writers and, and whatnot actually get it um, that you end up with a lot of shit out there, which just uh, dampens the um, perception of yeah. sci-fi out there. And with all this pulp stuff that's out there, uh, you end up not. You, you, there, there, there's just kind of this image out there of oh, sci-fi, so it's not going to be good quality. Yeah. And, and I don't think there's ever been a sci-fi film that's won an Oscar for best yeah. picture. Well, it's you know? like, or an Emmy for best picture. That's one series. of the things I want to do with Save Sci-Fi. Eventually, eventually, want us to get to the point where we can help authors get their books out there. We can help projects like Nobility get off the ground. Um, now that's still oh, probably impossible, <laughs> but I'm still going to try. Well, no. If you keep growing your fan base and you become a, um, a, uh, uh, I've got a little bit of a strategy in the works that oh, I'm not willing to reveal yet. No, that's. <laughs> He's going to murder if, us if all. Life insurance money. It's all about the life insurance money. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So we're killing Michael, or? I've got to, got to take over somehow. You've got to kill him and eat his heart to absorb his power. Oh, brother. Boy. Sorry, I was watching Defiance again. 
I don't ah, care. Ah, Rainbow Sun Franks is on, and he's awesome. Won't you say something about we may end up with dinner with him? Let's not eat him. Literally. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. I, I can honestly say I'm a humanitarian. Long pork is delicious. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> but I mean, crowdfunding, the nobility, um, uh, crowdfunding campaigns. We did two. We did a Kickstarter, and then that failed. So what we did is we did an Indiegogo campaign, where people who had pledged to the Kickstarter campaign could pledge to the Indiegogo campaign, and we did that so that um, we could at least get some of the funds that that were was yeah. pledged. Now, um, and that's where we got uh, some of our funding from. Uh, uh, not tons and tons of it, but, but some of it. And um, what what happened there is um, we we pushed it out too soon. Uh, and right before we, we pulled the trigger on it, um, uh, several team members who had who, who had said that you know they were going to, especially the ones who were going to help us getting it out there. Um, uh, didn't yeah. <laughs> they, they, they ended up dropping out last minute and then the folks that said that they could cover those responsibilities weren't up to the yeah. task uh, and then you combine that with the fact that we didn't have our cast assembled yet we didn't have you know, all we had was basically a script and a handful of VFX shots yeah. so we didn't have enough content we didn't have the cast together we didn't have our fan bases organized and we didn't have our team put together. And so what ended up happening is we did the best we could, but we weren't able to really get it out there at the level that, that we would have needed to in order to, to get um, uh, properly yeah. funded. And then, you know, and the ones that I've been a part of that were successful, um, you know, they had that core fan base and they were able to, to tap into um, and some. AJ, we lost you again. again. AJ. We were able DJ, we've lost you again. Can you hear me now? Uh, not really. <laughs> uh, how about now? Nope. All right, let me let me move. It sounds like EJ uses Vodafone, the phone company destined to give you no reception, <laughs> even next to the transmitter. <laughs> Vodafone, so bad Australians actually wrote a song about it. Yeah. Well, you know what they use in front of AT and T headquarters, right? <laughs> you know what they use at AT and T headquarters, right? Virgin. No. Oh, Verizon. <laughs> we don't have that over here. <laughs> oh well, it's an American company, yeah. I guess. Um. But yeah, so um, the ones that were a part of, you know, they had their existing fan bases. They had their yeah. cast together. They had, you know. Um, they had a lot of team members. They might not have had the best organization, but they had enough people to be able to scramble and get stuff out and get yeah. content out, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, so that is my view on yeah. crowdfunding. Yeah, um, we've done a couple of small crowdfunding things for Save Sci-Fi in the past and same sort of thing. It's just the, the trick is trying to get the interest in it and, yeah, um, it's sort of one of those double-edged swords you either win big or you crash and burn hilariously yeah uh well and you know getting those uh, getting those thought leaders like like what you're trying to become uh is crucial getting folks like you know um you know not necessarily folks that are a part of the project even just folks like um will, like some of these Star Trek sort of risk the, that have... the, the financial side of things well, not not even that. It's it's more of like, for example, if you uh, have a lot of friends who have uh, like like for example, a lot of these Star Trek uh, fan series have significant fan bases because they're able to t tap, in tap into the existing Trek fan base and get Trek actors and things like that. So if I was to do a crowdfunding campaign now, those would probably be among the first folks I'd reach out to of uh, who are willing to. Uh, might be willing to share and, and be thought leaders and, and, and help get the project out, yeah. out there. And that's what I did with our trailer. And we got, you know, within a week, we had like over 20,000 yeah. views. And the, so, and the trailer looks spectacular. I love it. 
<laughs> Thanks. And uh, the the actual project is going to look a lot better because um, we uh, uh, pr- pretty much what happened with the trailer is I just sat down and did all the work myself. So I did all the color correction. I did all of the um, um, you know developing of the look and and the editing and and you know taking existing footage just kind of flopping through everything that we had and finding, you know, good moments for us to use. The, um, uh, with the actual project itself, um, you know, we have a professional colorist who's really effing good. Um, and, you know, we have Thomas is doing, you know, the interior effects to be us doing the exterior. So we had those exteriors for, for the trailer. And, and so we, we have, you know, uh, and we have a professional editor doing the ed- editing, so the the we're, you're going to see a big jump in quality between the trailer and the project yeah. itself. Yeah. So, which once once we have the uh, um, all, all the effects and coloring finished, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna start working on a new trailer. So that'll yeah, be that'd fine. Be cool. If, if it falls mm. over there, I don't need, I'd sneak in and make my own. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's the middle of the day. Don't EJ's still on Australia works. time. He's out cold. <sighs> Quick, edit up a trailer. <sighs> you wake up. Oh, wait, did I do that before I went to sleep? Play. Oh god, delete. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say you're, 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 a trailer does not take a few hours to do. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. That's sort of. A, that's a, that's something we deleted because it was crap. That was wrong. That was them not even telling the lo- saying the line right. Why? This is a blooper reel, not a trailer. What the hell is going on? <laughs> what? What do you mean? Oh, it's got man. forty thousand views. How did that even happen? And and it's everyone sharing it, going, "Oh my god, this is so bad! You have to <laughs> you have to look at it." <laughs> it's like train wreck. Yeah. Duh. That'd be pretty funny. But, sort of intentionally give your yeah. project in advance the train wreck sort of feel so all the trailers that look absolutely horrible like as bad as humanly possible so the train wreck fanatics get in there and then it's actually absolutely spectacular and they walk out going i don't know what's going on anymore so basically you're you're advocating the fantastic four treatment well the opposite of the fantastic four treatment where the oh it happens to be a trailer and, and yeah, a good exactly. project like a, a trailer that's so catastrophically <laughs> sure. bad it makes everyone want to watch the movie just to see how bad the movie is. And then the movie turns out to be spectacular. Instead of setting the bar really high and, ex- and setting the expectations really high, you expect, set the expectations really low. And then if you've got a good you've got a good movie, it seems like a great movie. Yeah, that, that, it's funny because that, that, that's actually been one of the things that... that um has added a lot of pressure to this because we are getting a fan base and, and folks like yourself are, are, are uh, really looking forward to seeing it and, and setting, you know, the expectations are set really high. Now I am extremely confident we'll be able to meet that, that expectation or perhaps even supersede it. But still, you know, the fact that we're already starting with these high expectation means, Oh fuck. You mean, I actually have to like do a good yeah. job. Like, this is, <laughs> this is going beyond fan film territory. Yeah. It's gaining its own momentum. <gasps> Oh no, Disney's coming! Run! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't see me selling to Disney, sorry. <laughs> so, so, Better sell Disney than the Fox. At least, at least Disney will do something decent. Yeah, you'll get more than one season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Oh, Fox cancels everything good. Disney just likes to own yeah. everything. Oh, you, you could try and flog it off to the BBC. You'll get 10 episodes a season, and they'll be really long episodes, an, almost an hour exactly an episode. But then you've got to wait <laughs> five years you, uh, between seasons. I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> then if you tax the producers, then you can go work for Amazon afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would be totally Top jokes are hilarious. Uh, it's, uh... I would be perfectly happy if this sold to the BBC. I mean, I, I, this would be, I mean, between Red Dwarf, Hyperspace, and Doctor Who, I think this would be right yeah. up there, Ali. Yeah, we we're actually getting, um, what's his face from, what's his name from Hyperspace is going to be here in, for Supernova? Uh, the, the main captain. He was also in Shaun of the Dead. And yeah, Nick Frost. Yeah, yeah, Nick Frost. Him. He's coming over for Supernova, so that's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah, just really cool. 
Hand him a nobility card, would you? <laughs> if <laughs> I had any? some, I would. Um, but we'll have to see you some. Well, all I'm going to say is Chris Judge from Nobility is going to the exact same con. Oh, I would just hand some cards yeah, to him. That works. Um, so yeah, I was just going to say. All I want to say is, Alan. I know the cake is not a lie. The cake is always a lie. The cake is always a lie. So one, of, one of my mates from work um, listening to the podcast. And he told me to give him a shout out, and, and he was talking about have, going and getting some cake before the podcast. So, <laughs> cake is always a yeah. lie. Yes, it's just, just like going over the dark side. Don't I'll believe just the rainbow cake. It's like don't trust the Jamie uh... Dodger. EJ, I was just like, I was eating rainbow cake. Did it taste like a rainbow? No, it's vanilla. See? Cake is a lot. <laughs> oh. That all can remember when you cut a cake and a rainbow appears and all the flavour's gone. <laughs> oh. It's like, uh, I'm, I'm wait, sure that was a biscuit I was eating before, but I'm not sure now. I'm going to give up on this tree in a second. Yes, Amy once again is playing uh, it, Minecraft it, during the jammy, podcast. It's not. <laughs> it's not a jam dodger. It's a starter self destruct yeah. button. Okay. <laughs> but I was promised tea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, we're a little bit off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually That's my a, task to call you back on track. Too much. But... Anyway, um. So, back on the sort of the subjects of the project of doing your own sort of project, when you're writing, the main form is sort of a introduce characters, set up what the conflict's going to be, and then set up sort of the and then sort of work your way up to the finale, and then do the finale eventually. If you could, what sort of time frame for a short film would you sort of have roughly if you were sort of working on a project? <laughs> Uh, I'm not quite sure I understand the question. What do you mean by uh, time frame? Um, like how, how long? How, on a how short long would you, if you were going to work on a short film, how long would the short be roughly in order to have sort of a a decent time to tell a story versus the amount of money needed to make it? Well, I mean, that's the balance. it really depends <laughs> on a lot of factors. It just what the initial concept is and what the initial vision is. You can tell a story in one sentence. Yeah. That has a beginning, middle, and an end. Um, I, I can't remember which writer it was who did this, but I think it was like in the 1800s. Uh, someone challenged uh, a famous writer to write a sentence in like six words or something, or or there was some sort of contest on like who could write the shortest story and have it be a story. And he came up with um, baby shoes for sale, never worn. <laughs> what? I get that. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 there's basically the 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 child the died in childbirth and and now they're selling off the the stuff they had yeah. made or or bought in preparation of, of having a child. Yeah, it's kind of so sad and depression. They, <laughs> well, yeah, but but it is a complete story in in six yeah. words. And also, an um, ad in every other newspaper. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, it really does depend on what the story is, um, the, the direction you want to take it, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So, so like, just to say, how long would I make a short? I mean, I've, I've made shorts that, you know, based off of six page scripts and normally you're looking at about a, a minute a page. So, you know, we're looking at like five or six yeah. minutes for that short. Um, and that was actually my the, the my, my first test of of um, whether or not I could produce and 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 direct and and things like that and uh, and bring one of my projects through through to fruition. Now we never finished it, never made it. You know, we never finished the editing, um, but um, um, you know, we shot it and everything. Uh, but yeah, so you could do it. Um, you know, in just a few minutes and, and have it be a whole complete story, beginning, middle and end. Uh, the short that, that I did was, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it's called Space Daddy. And Is it, it, about Captain it was Kirk? about the. No. <laughs> that would be Space Boy, OK, Space Pimp. 
Space Camp. <laughs> <laughs> no, because Man, it's just not selling. Yeah, but Space that wouldn't Camp. work because the fact is, he's not selling someone else out. He's selling himself. At that point. Ooh. Ace man slut. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> but no, um, well, Space Daddy was about the first um, uh, manned mission to Mars, and it was it took place in the um, uh, in the home of one of the astronauts, and he was it was set in the near future. Um, though I kind of went with like a retro kind of 60s look to everything uh, as kind of a hat nod to the Apollo missions yeah. and and going to the moon and all that and um, and the Mercury program and everything like that. And, um, and it was about how, uh, about the drama of, of, um, of this man is leaving his family for years to um, uh to go on a mission that he may very well not come back from a very dangerous mission. And in fact, I, I, I told the, the, the lead, the lead actor, you're not yeah. coming back. So I, I wanted him to know that to inform his, his character. Um, and you know, he, him and his wife have an argument and she's telling, you know, basically telling him not to go. And he's like, look, they spent all this money on safety and, and you know, chance of a lifetime and whatnot. And, um, and then he kind of goes outside and his kids playing with this toy rocket and, you know, vroom, 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 and all that kind of stuff. And, and he calls the kid over and, and he has a discussion with the kid and the kid's like, you know, well, grandma said, you don't love us and that's why you're leaving and all that kind of stuff. And he's like, you know, and, and he, he pulls the kid in, has to sit on his lap and points up to, to Mars. Um, which, uh, you know, because they're nearing the launch date and it's close to earth and, and you can see it as a pinprick and he goes, you know, see that star, that's where I'm going to be. Yeah. So whenever, you know, you're lonely or, or, you know, know that I'm there looking down yeah. on you, you know, I'm always the with Martian. you. Sort of that was the other movie I was trying to think of before. Oh, that does yes. look good. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. My, my brain just went Mars, Martian. Bing. So I just had to say it. Yeah, <laughs> if I don't say that it, it looks... leaves and it never comes back. So yeah. Anyway, that, EJ, continue with your story. It's very amazing. sounds very interesting. I look forward to a well, thanks, look forward yeah. to an early edit tomorrow at. Um... <laughs> Actually, that one I could probably edit today, but um, <laughs> uh, if I saw the footage, I have to I have to go fi- find it. But you know, and then I uh, so from there we cut. To I have an old '60s Mustang, Ooh. and so like to go with the whole '60s uh, thing, um, and uh, so we see the kid in the backseat of the car watching the launch, and you just kind of see the reflection of the rocket. And I think we I I, I got footage from a uh, I found footage on YouTube of a uh, of one of the uh, Apollo uh, yeah. launches. And and so you see that kind of launch and take off and, and just the kid's expression of awe as he's watching it yeah. go into the heavens. Then you have you know music and, and all that kind of stuff. And Space, it the final ends frontier. with ah, these are the voyages. <laughs> no, and, and, um, and you got a dude in a rowboat in space with Enterprise plastered down the side of it, going hey do hey do. It's like, what just happened? <laughs> but yeah, and, and then the story ends with the um, like some time later, the mom's now having to to uh, raise alone. their kid on on her own, and and you know she's it, she's calling him in for for dinner, and and uh, uh, he the, the kid starts to run, and he turns, stops, looks up at the sky, the star. And says, um, "I gotta go in. Now. It's it, uh, it's okay, Daddy. I gotta go in, but we'll play again soon." And he goes nice. back in. So, the closest so, thing I had to that is a, but, is a uh, story because I did my because that was actually that's really really good. I wouldn't mind actually watching that. <laughs> Just well, hopefully I'll be able to get it out to you soon. 
<laughs> like I said, it's, 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 you've got to have the, the final edit version, all visual effects cut and done in 20 minutes after the end of the podcast. Yeah, no. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> so, when I, it's going to be shit, but go for when it. When I was on my... Um, over here, we've got... Um, when you get your license, you get things called P-plates. I don't know if you guys do sort of the uh, p plate type system over there or if you just get your full license once you sort of do a thing. I don't know. Sorry, uh, like you're talking yeah, about driver's, driver's license? license? Um, yeah. So we get... Uh, we do a, we do a test, get our L's, and then you drive around with your parents in the car for 12 months, two years. <coughs> Sorry. Or even less if you Yeah, depending old. on how old you are. And then you get your P's, <laughs> which... Uh, a provisional license allows you to drive on your own with no one else in the car, but you've sort of still got limitations on what you can drive, how sort of fast you can go, that sort of thing. Um, when I was had that, I had an old 1987 brown, like rust brown. It wasn't rusty, but it was just that, that colour. Um, Pulsar. What? Max. Shall we go to... Yeah, Comic-Con? we'll do that in a second. We've got plenty of time. Because <laughs> you're way off topic, you can talk no, to no, him no, afterwards. I've got a fifth, it really won't take long, I promise. And so... <laughs> this thing was a shit box, but it was a. It didn't look that bad, and one of my mates had a Subaru WRX, and we shot a short film really late at night on the Gold Coast at the traffic lights near where I lived, of me, dra- um, drag racing his Subaru and him annihilating me, and then, the next shot is of me driving the car into a garage. The garage door goes down. The garage door comes up. It's got a cardboard body kit. Cardboard bonnet scoop, cardboard side skirts, cardboard wrist. Well, it looks, and it's all like duct tape, but it looks absolutely hilarious. And then you see a repeat of the race, and this time um, it's done in a way that the pulsar actually keeps up with the other car, and it, it makes no fucking sense whatsoever. But that's the closest I have to a story. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I mean, yeah, well, but, but then it comes back to, to what I was saying earlier is, um, how, you know, if I was to do a short, how long would it be? Well, the short I did do was about five or you know, five minutes ish. Um, and, but it all depends on the concept and, and what you want it yeah. to be. Um, you know, if, if you want it to be 20 minutes, you know, or half hour or what have you, you know, great. You know, as, as long as it, it, I guess the best way to go about it would be once you have the concept, figuring out what the best format is for that yeah. concept. Like for Nobility, I the, the concept, I designed it to be a, a TV series. And what we've been focusing on this entire time is the, the pilot episode, um, you know, which is, uh, I think, the final edit, we're around 48 minutes. Um which is a bit long for a pilot, yeah. but yeah, you know, it works. Um, and uh, with Space Daddy, it was meant to be, you know, uh, uh, just this very short, short. Uh, and so it's it's more of coming up with the concept and then finding the best format yeah. for it. Now with Nobility, it was actually really interesting. I always knew I wanted it to be a series, and and that was the direction I wanted to go. But I didn't know what opportunities as far as distribution we would get. So what I did is I wrote the first two episodes. I wrote the series Bible in the first two episodes. And I wrote the pilot episode to be a cliffhanger so that what we could do is if we wanted, we could take the first two episodes, slam them together, and have a feature. Because that's actually a lot easier to sell. Um, Or um, we could break it up uh, and according to the acts... And each individual act would be a webisode. And then after, you know, in the editing process, um, uh, a lot of the folks I was talking to were interested in having, rather than these 10 to 15 minute episode, uh, uh, webisodes, uh, which is what each act would be, um, they wanted, um, uh, or actually more like 7, seven to 15, depending on, on the act. The first act's long because we're, we're introducing everyone. But after that, it's about 7 minutes an act-ish. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 7 to 10 minutes an act. Um, the, um, but anyway, um, you know, a lot of the folks we were talking to said they were interested in more like 3 to 5 minute webisodes. So then we did a version of the cut um, that is that if, if we partnered with someone to, to distribute it in, in that fashion, uh, we were prepared. 
you know, to have, you know, these five to seven minute yeah. webisodes. So, um, and so, but still, I, I, I don't like that version uh, as much because, uh, again, the project wasn't designed for that. With, with if you do a pilot and then you break it up uh, according to webisodes uh, or, or use the, a- the, the natural act structure to be webisodes. So, and when I say act, I mean basically the little bits you see or, or the, the chunks you see before they go to a commercial yeah. break. That's one act. And most TV shows are five or six acts. Uh, five is more traditional, and that, that's how I we've we've divided up nobility, um, um, in, in this five act structure, or it's like five acts and a teaser, or, or what have you, depending on on the show, um, and um, and and so that's what it was designed to be, and then um, and then I also, uh, it, it, but if we shot the second episode and put it together, then we'd have very easily a, a made-for-TV movie. Which is sort of like um, what they did with the Stargate pilot. Atlantis pilot and the Stargate SG-1 pilot. There were sort of two-part episodes that were mushed together into a long sort of story. Yeah, a made-for-TV yeah. movie. Uh, or just like... Um, uh, a call to arms for Babylon five was a made for TV feature that was sort of a backdoor pilot for yeah. crusades or crusade yeah. or, or what have you. Yeah. Sort of uh, or or the mini series. Yeah. The, the networks really just kind of destroyed yeah. that one. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I mean, they did the same thing like they did with Firefly. They aired episodes out of order. They kept demanding changes and whatnot and just kind of walked all over Straczynski's yeah. vision. On to the news. So, Stuart, <laughs> you've been sitting there quietly for quite a while now. What news yep. do you have for us? And we'll cover Oz Comic Con right at the end. So, do everything until Oz Comic Con. Yeah. Right. I've got some really, really bizarre news that I would not have expected to see. So the Pokemon World Championships were on over the weekend. Apparently, and <laughs> apparently, two, two guys got arrested. Wait, wait, wait. Co- so a Pokemon no, no. battle got so real that people had to get arrested. Wait, what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So these uh, the two men, uh, Stumbo, uh, Kevin Norton and James Stumbo, were arrested on weapon charges after police found police found a 12-gauge Remington shotgun, a DPM-5 model AR-15 rifle, 700 rounds of ammunition, and a hunter r- hunting knife in their car. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so they, they, mis- un- they obviously mistook the concept of gotta catch them all? <laughs> gotta kill them all. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, just, just gonna... Ah, Pokemon. The video game that that teaches kids it's A-OK to do dogfighting. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Ah, Pokemon. The, one of the few Nintendo games where friendships were broken. I'm looking at you, Mario Party. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think about it. The worst thing is, in the whole show, they send out 10-year-olds with no little to no schooling to walk around the and world. Make animals and animals fight each other. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Japan. Oh, Japan. We love- poor, poor Japan. Oh, Japan. It only makes so much more sense now. <laughs> but yeah, it was just like, I, I saw that, I was like, that is the weirdest story I've seen in a while. <laughs> Definitely up there. Yeah, uh, moving, yeah moving along, uh, Gotham released a new trailer uh, up showing their villains for next Ooh. season. And we get to see a lot more of Jerome, uh, aka their version of the young Joker. Nice. So nice, nice to see that. We get to see a bit of Tigress. She'll be coming into the series as well. Yeah. So it still disappoints work? me that Gotham oh. and Arrow and um, Man of Steel, those three different DC universes, couldn't sort of be put together. It definitely sort of saddens me. Well, yeah. if you think Gotham is too young for adding to yeah, Arrow, yeah, but Gotham could be back, like a better putting it, back in the day, um, pre Arrow, and sort of set up the Batman that is in Man of Steel as a kid. So, well, that's all. Yeah, that's not with that though. It's then they already have two billionaire uh, echoes 
running around, you know, as, as vigilantes. You want to add a third one? <laughs> yeah, DC loves their billionaire wackos. Yeah, speaking of one of our, of one of our billionaire wackos, Stephen Mel actually said that he wouldn't mind having a Batman come into the Arrow universe. Yeah. He was doing a Q&A and he, um, Q and a sessions with fans and said that he would love um, a Bruce Wayne to come in to either make an ally or a rival. I was going to say, so what, he can beat the crap out of him? <laughs> yeah, the, the characters are too similar. The, the, how they've done Arrow and, how, and, and uh, how they would end up or have to end up doing Batman, they're too yeah. similar. Unfortunately, yeah. Keeping on Arrow... Um, I mentioned this last week that Stephen Amell was, was, had a wrestling match at, uh, SummerSlam. And, um, so he did not wear the arrow, uh, the arrow outfit. He wore the top half, but took, um, but took it off once he got into the ring. So. No fun. Aww. We got a little bit, a little bit of, a little bit. We, we bit can tea, understand why he took it off because if they're still filming it and that's an actual prop piece from the show, the last thing they need is it destroyed. Destroyed yeah. sooner than yeah. necessary. The cool thing is though that um he actually did a lot of cool stuff. He actually did he actually did a crossbody off the top rope. I was like, oh wow, I wasn't expecting nice. that. Like he full on got into it and everything. I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. He's actually not too bad. Very nice. Uh, moving along to some Star Wars news. <laughs> Dragon. <laughs> he didn't have his abs. That's a ah. stunt double. <laughs> it's called so, a body double, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Moving on to Star Wars news. And um, so all of Hav- Hasbro, a catalog featuring all of Hasbro's uh, Star Wars Force Awakens toys have become available online. With a few surprises. Yes. I, uh, a few nice things to mention. You can get your own Kylo Ren mask, which I think is actually really uh, going to be a really interesting sell point. I think a really big one is going to be you can have a Chewbacca nerf gun. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, nerf crossbow. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> and your mic's played up. It just sounded and my, right. My personal, my personal favorite out of the cute bunch is the fur barker. It's a Furby is chewy. Oh, god. Just, just, just oh, no, god. no, no. <laughs> Ran in the water. Fill it with fire. Not enough <laughs> fire. Need more fire. Although I, I, I'm going to say this now, and you can quote me on this slide. I'm definitely getting the remote control BB-8. I don't yeah. care. That actually does look pretty cool. I like yeah. that. Actually, d- does it like roll around like like the yeah, Android yeah, in the remote control that you can control and it rolls around on the carpet and, and on the yeah. floor and stuff. Come that on, actually, that cool. yeah, that that's gonna be a huge yeah. selling point for kids. A couple of things uh, that we also like is yeah. that <laughs> yeah, yeah, a couple of things we also noticed is that the micro machines yes, are coming. Yes, gonna back. be getting some of those. So jump on those because those will those will sell out quickly and they become way too expensive. Yeah, the old series of micro machines. Uh, you try and get a set of those. Good luck. Yeah. I think they have two tunnels yeah. in here. Brian is my nieces and nephews. Yeah, and um, I I forgot to allude on this last week, but before uh, D twenty three, uh, um. Entertainment Weekly released a uh, a, a feature a feature on um, Force Awakens, which gave us a couple of which gave us some more info on characters, especially Kylo Ren's name. Jango Fett. That it's <laughs> oh. no. Kylo Ren is not his name. He is Kylo from the Order from the Knights of Ren. Yeah. Now this is uh, this is opening up a lot of fan speculation, suggesting that that um, Kylo Ren and and um, Finn, ah uh, sorry Ray, could potentially be the sol- could potentially be the solo kids, because of the fact of that staff that um, Ray is always holding, could potentially be a um, a Jedi or Sith yeah. artifact. Could prove interesting because if you if you if you notice in every, every shot that she's that um that 
that um, Ray is in, she's always got that staff. Even in her toy, she has that staff. That staff is not there for for um, just Decoration. to randomly put there. That is going to be involved in in not just seven, like seven, eight, and nine. Like that's her yeah, weapon. Definitely looks like it. Sort of like looks like the old. Um... It looks like Darth Plagueis's old yeah, staff. To be honest, say, it looks like the um, the lightning sticks the droids used in Episode Three, sort of. Oh yeah, the um, what, uh, what the math yeah. cards used, sort of. But yeah, that the, there's no there's no like word on what the stuff is, but because it's so involved, like in every shot that she's in, that stuff is there. It's not a coincidence that yeah. that she has it. It's not just some random stick. Yeah. It's it's there for a reason. What we don't what we don't know. We'll find out hopefully yeah. soon. Or we can wait for the movie. I wonder if they're ever going to end the rule of two. Uh, we're about, we're about four, just over four uh, under four months out from um, yes. episode seven. It's gonna be good. Oh, yeah, because we're meant to, and we're meant to get a new trailer sometime in yeah. fall. Well, America's fall, our spring. So yeah, sometime in the next couple of months. Yeah, I, I, my prediction is October seventeenth. It's exactly two months out from start from episode yeah. seven. So. Just like no, yeah. no, no, no announcement. Just bloop on the internet. So, there what other news do we have? Is that it, or are we moving on to Oz Comic Con? I will move on to Oz Comic Con. There's not uh, really much Oz else. Comic Con, it is. Do you want to start reading the list of people and... that are going just to make EJ oh jealous? My God. Oh my god! This, <laughs> this list. Put it this way: I've done up is... a conservative budget. Now, normally when I do it with my conservative budget, it works out to be about 500 bucks, and I'm like, okay, I've still got a couple hundred bucks to play with, and I can wait and see who comes. I've done my conservative budget up for this one. It's already sitting on a grand. Yeah, I, I actually have gone and purchased VIP tickets for the first time ever, so this is this is how incredible this yeah. cast is. I'm going to go on the website because it's better to just read the cast off I the website. I haven't seen a, a con with a lineup like this in a very long time. Yeah. The only sad thing is Amanda tapping yeah. at the bail. True, but she, that's because yeah, she's we, filming. We, we lost so, yeah. Amanda and we gained, gained David Hewlett Two and... Um, Let's yeah. not read it. So, yeah, yeah, so the, the current confirmed guests at this point uh, Richard Dean Anderson from Stargate. O'Neill and MacGyver. Jim Beaver, who... Yeah, O'Neill and MacGyver. Uh, Jim Beaver, who plays Bobby in Supernatural. Bobby! <laughs> Damn it, Bobby. Idiots. Idiots. Yeah, uh, David, he yeah, David Hewlett, as uh, Dave mentioned, who he's most certainly <laughs> geeking out about. I get, to get I get to get him to sign his tablet. Yeah, uh, Christopher Haydor. Who played Todd the Wraith and Jack the Ripper in Sanctuary. Jack the Ripper in Sanctuary, yep. Uh, oh, Jack. yeah, he did a great oh, yeah. job in uh, Hell He is Angels. a spectacular yeah. actor. How he is not bigger than what he yeah. is is beyond me. Yeah, I uh, just announced today Brian Krauss, who is Leo and Charms. Yes. Oh, crap. And, <laughs> yeah. and Amy is spending <laughs> more money. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jody is very happy about this because she loves Charmed. Uh, Sam Lloyd, who is from Scrubs. Uh, Rachel Luttrell from Stargate yeah, Atlantis. I... No, it's Luttrell. It's Taylor, it's, right? No, it's, they, have Luttrell, they have Luttrell on the website. I'm so. sure it's They have Luttrell. No. Just... Nah, oh, whatever. <laughs> I'm just going yeah. what's on the website. It's it. They did a yeah, type of it's their fault. Go on the website. We, we blame Oz Comic Con. Yeah. Uh, Rob Maschio, uh, I think it's Maschio, who's also from yep. Scrubs. Uh... Rachel Nichols from Continuum. Yep. Uh, Chris Holland, uh, uh, I think it's Reed from Lost Girl. Yay! Yeah, uh, Ryan Robbins from Ooh. Sanctuary. Yay! Uh, Tim Rose from Star Wars, for those who do There's not know. He's, he's the puppeteer. Yeah, he's the voice and puppeteer of There's Admiral Akbar. Crap. That's a trap. So I'm, I, uh, me as a Star Wars fan, looking, very looking forward to him. Uh, Mark Shepard, who's been in God if knows you how don't know who Mark Shepard is, switch the podcast off right this second. You, right you have no right to listen to this podcast. All right, podcast. see you guys. <laughs> okay, bye guys. <laughs> so, let's, let's, let's begin the list. He was in Doctor Who. He He's Crowley in Supernatural. He's, he was in <laughs> Firefly. He was in... Oh, I met him at San Diego yeah. Comic Con. 
Yeah, it's like he has, I don't know. He's been in everything I could possibly yeah. think of. Uh, Warehouse yep. 13, yep. Monk, yep. Chuck, yep. CSI. Like, Dude. yeah. Soldier, Soldiers of Fortune Practice, Battle Invisible Star-like, Man. Yeah. yeah, with Star Trek Voyager. Like, he's been in the so only, much. The only sci-fi series I, can, I know of that he wasn't in, like, of the big ones, is Stargate. He wasn't in Stargate. Dragon wants to know who he was in um, um, Doctor Who. In the episode where they go he back in time with the silence and, and they're in, in they're in America and they're dealing with the F- FBI guys, he's that guy. He was the FBI agent that yeah. they coordinate with. He's in, uh, for what episode you'd like to watch, he is in The Impossible Astronaut yeah, and Day uh, of the Moon. Yeah. So I've actually got that yeah. in yeah. my yeah. little mini TARDIS and he's going to be signing that. So... And rounding out the actors, this is just the actors part. This is just oh, the, this is the TV and film, I guess, by the way. So rounding out that is Ksenia Solo, who is in... The... <sighs> you, you can't get a sentence that out, and just... I find that hilarious. <laughs> okay, that's just the TV and film, guess. Let's move anyway. on. Anyway. Let's move on to our voice actors. <laughs> Starting off with Dante Busk, uh, Basco, who is the voice of Zuko from a- Avatar The Last Airbender. Very nice. So, really looking forward to meeting him. Uh, Tob- Todd Habercorn, I guess he counts as TV and film. Uh, Todd Habercorn, no, uh, renowned voice actor, has been in Soul Leader, Natsu from Fairytale, and is also Spock in Star, in Star Trek yeah. Continues. I could see him playing Spock. Uh, yeah, he does really good. Uh, Olivia Hack, moving along, she is been in uh, Family Guy, Blood, and she was tightly in, in um, Avatar yeah. Last Airbender. Uh, and now, now we come to one of the most recognized voices in the Master world. Master Roshi! Mark. Yeah, Mark McFarland. Master <laughs> Roshi in the Dragon Ball series, uh, um, Havoc in Formal Alchemist, Buggy the Clown in One Piece. Like, this guy has been around in the voice acting um, world, um, world for years and years. Yeah. And rounding off our voice actors is Ricky Simmons. Invader Zim. Who? Yes, he's he works. He's done Invader Zim. He's Gur, which I have met him and he's absolutely hilarious. Yeah. But yeah, we're st- by the way, we're still a month out, for, r- roughly r- about a month out from World's Comic Con. I don't think we're le- we're, we're going to be. Uh, we can't or, survive too many more announcements. Yeah, it's just, it's crazy. This is the biggest guesses I have seen in a long time. I am most certainly looking forward to this. Like, this is a reason I bought a VIP pass. Cause it's just, no, this is there's so oh, yeah. many people. It's going to be good. Definitely looking forward to it. I'm hopefully going to get a media pass. I'm going to take the camera and do some filming. Um, take, take lots of help, photos. Help. Probably and if I get, if I get my 3D not. camera working, I'm going to be taking that because that thing is awesome. To hell, there'll probably be more guest announcements in the next uh, few no. days. My 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 my, my bank going? account is saying no. <laughs> I know it's like my mad sentiment. No, my my wallet is like my 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 credit card just. I, I've already cut it up. I, I I've already cut it up so I don't use it. <laughs> And you know the worst thing is only two months until Nova. Yeah, it, just, and in that two months period, there's After. all sorts of cool stuff coming out. You got the new Halo game yep. and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, we've got the, uh, and even before Supernova, there's EB Expo um, and PAX. Like there's there's our two big gaming conventions yeah. for the year. So we know that Battlefront will is confirmed to be at, um, EB exactly, Expo. So. So if I have to get a train down to Sydney just so I can go play, I will. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Anyway, I think that about sums it up. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to Oz Comic Con. So, uh, last last year was good, and it set the groundwork. And admittedly, the numbers were a tad low. Uh, I think this year it's, it's, those numbers are going to be this gigantic. Year, I think they're overcompensating slightly, and I love it. <laughs> it's just there's so many like almost. N- Almost every major fandom is represented. You got the big three. You got Star Wars, Star Trek, yeah. Stargate. There's your big three. They're all represent. There's your big Wait, three Star represented. Todd Todd Habercorn. Star Trek yeah, continues. I guess. 
That that still <laughs> it still counts in the Star Trek universe. It may be fan made, but it still counts. And and they have had um they have had. Well, it's, fan, it's, it's a fan production, but the people who are fans doing it are industry yeah. professionals. Like yeah, uh, yeah. It's, so I know I know Grant from MythBusters is in it, and a few others. So. Yeah, and they've also had like members from like um from Next Gen and stuff nice. on there as well. Very so. nice. So they they've had had like celebrity they have had celebrity guests and stuff. So I I put that under um, close enough under the universe. Yeah. So that there's your big three represented. And then you and then you got like Mark Shepard. Uh, the, 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 there's your Doctor Who and Supernatural. Yeah. Lost Girl like Continuum. Oh my god. Charmed. What? <laughs> Charmed, like all, all, we're, all we're missing, to be honest, is something from Lost and we're good. Okay, yeah, Battlestar but Mark Galactica. Shepard classes as Battlestar Galactica, so <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. All Damn it, Mark lost. Shepard's doing everything, and we love you for it. <laughs> God, we love you for it. God, his line is going to be oh, gigantic. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> So is Richard Dean Anderson. I must say, Richard Dean Anderson and Mark Shepard are going to have the two yeah. biggest lines. Well, when I met um, Richard Dean Anderson in Adelaide, there was Richard Dean Anderson sitting next to um, Captain Kirk, um, William Boy, Shatner. Shatner. Who do you think had the bigger line, William Shatner or Richard Dean Anderson? <laughs> Even. It's you couldn't Anderson. tell. They went across from one side of the room where the lines were, through all of the stalls to the wall... And then merged into an unholy blob. <laughs> so. This is like, as I said, this is going to be insanely yeah. amazing. So. Um, so. Anyway, <laughs> catch you later, guys. Okay, bye all. Bye, everyone. Bye.